Hi everyone, I'm Rick Blackwell from the Education Network and this is the School District of Palm Beach County's Grand Battle of the Books. Last year the competition was virtual, but we are back in the studio for the championships and so glad to be back in front of a studio audience. The Grand Battle of the Books competition is sponsored by Library Media Services with the support of educational technology, informational technology, and the Education Network. Book titles for the District Battle of the Books come from the Sunshine State Young Readers Award and the Florida Teens Read List. Now, titles for these state-sponsored reading programs are selected annually by a statewide committee of school library media specialists. Let me grab just four of the books right here. These students, some of them read all 15. Here's just four of the exciting titles. Now, throughout this school year, students have read and discussed the 15 titles in their age division. In the first round of the Battle of the Books, teams from participating schools answered multiple choice questions in an online competition. After hosting the competition virtually last year, as I said, we're excited to be back in the studios of the Education Network this year. The top two winning teams from each age division they join us today to battle to determine the champion of this year's Grand Battle of the Books. And we are happy to have Diana Fetterman, the Assistant Superintendent for Teaching and Learning as the official timekeeper. Stephanie Sunshine from Library Media Services as the official scorekeeper. And Lisa Seymour from Library Media Services will be our contest judge. Copies of each title used in the Grand Battle are available for reference. I will ask teams questions that will begin with the phrase, in which book? And the teams must answer with the name of the book and the author. The first team that makes it to 125 points will be crowned the winner of the Grand Battle of the Books. We're going to make sure each team gets an equal amount of questions before we do crown a winner. In the elementary school division, we are pleased to have teams from Morikami Park Elementary. You can cheer for them. And we also have a team from Citrus Cove Elementary. Congratulations. Now, let's meet these reading superstars. They really are superstars, starting with the team from Morikami Park and their captain, Rishik Vishak. Rishik, good to see you again. Last year we saw each other on the computer, right? Yep. Okay, you guys are the defending champs this year. Tell me about your school name and the team name, and how did you guys get that team name? So... Our school is Morikami, and our team name is Morikami Racing Readers. We got that name because last year we used the same name, and even though it's a new year, we decided to stick with the old name. It worked last year for you guys, right? Yep. You, you can't break a good thing. That's fantastic. Rishik, it's so good to see you again. Tell me one exciting thing about your life. One exciting thing about my life is that I like to play tennis. I bet you're pretty good at it, too, aren't you? Yeah. All right. Let's meet the rest of the team from Morikami Park. If you can pick up the microphone. Introduce yourself, maybe one cool fact about you. My name is Anushka and I have a pet fish. What's the name of your pet fish? My pet fish's name is Eminem. Did you feed Eminem this morning? Uh, we, we don't feed it every day, we feed it like day after. That makes sense, yeah. exactly. Okay, next contestant. My name is Nico and I like to draw manga. Very cool. And our last contestant from Morikami Park? My name is Ashley Duven St. Hilaire, and I like to play soccer. All right, we got a soccer player and a tennis player on the team and some very cool kids from Morikami Park Elementary. All right, so Morikami won it last year. This year, they're going to take on a very tough team from Citrus Cove Elementary. And we want to say hello to the captain, Anam Mirza. Anam, hello, welcome. This is very exciting to have you here. Tell me about your team name and how did you guys come up with it? So our school name is Citrus Cove Elementary and our team name is Books and Whoops. And we came up with it because all of us here are animal lovers and we wanted something to do with books and animals. I love the combination. Were there any good books this year in the Sunshine State reading list about animals? Yes, definitely. Fantastic. That worked in your favor. That's awesome. Right. So um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Give me one cool fact. Um, I love animals and I love to read books. What's your favorite animal? Uh, cats. Cows? No, cats. Calves? Cats. Oh, cats. <laughs> <laughs> I got it on the third try. All right. 
Let's go down the line and meet the rest of the, um, the players from Citrus Cove Elementary. Go ahead. My name is Josephine, and I have a pet cat. All right, Josephine, thanks. Welcome. Our next contestant. Hi, my name is Mia, and Kyrie is my sister. Hi, my name is Kyrie, and I love pandas. Hi, my name is Mika, and I like dogs. All right, there they are, the team from Citrus Cove Elementary. Let's give a round of applause to both teams. We're very excited to get this started. We're going to start in reverse alphabetical order. So today the first question is going to go to Morikami Park. I wish all the teams good luck as we look forward to seeing which team will take the winning trophy back to their school. So let's get this started. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Morikami Park, you have the first question. Again, just a reminder to the captains, Speak nice and loud with a nice, clear voice with a lot of projection. Here we go, Morikami Park. In which book is an invention made after studying a microwave oven repair manual? Following back to Barbara Curley. Good job, Morikami Park. You got both of them right, the uh, book title and the author. All right, here we go, Citrus Cove. In which book is a school's motto, not for ourselves alone? What was it by Jamie Sumner? Um, nope, that's incorrect. And just a reminder too, 15 seconds, so you gotta make sure you at least start the answer before those 15 seconds. You did in that particular case, but your answer was wrong. So we're gonna go back to Morikami Park. In which book do characters use a gondola to cross the river? Um. The Incredibly Dead Pets of Rex Dexter by Aaron Reynolds. That is incorrect. Citrus Cove. In which book do the characters don scuba gear? The Magnificent Maker's How to Friendship by Jimmy Griffith. Can you say that one more time? The Magnificent Maker's How to Friendship by Jimmy Griffith. That is correct. Morikami Park. In which book does a character have a pet rat? Amelia Six by Kristen L. Gray. Congratulations, you got that right. In which book does a fictional school have the motto, courage is being afraid and charging forth regardless? Charlie Frog by Karen Kane. That is incorrect. Morikami Park. In which book does a character muse quote, if I were a number, I'd be a seven. Seven days, seven colors of the rainbow, seven notes on a musical scale, seven continents, seven seas. Black Brother, Black Brother by Jewel Parker Road. That is correct, Morikami Park, Citrus Cove. In which book did a character get trapped in some water lily roots? The Magnificent Maker's Heritage of Friendship by Jeannie Griffin. That is correct. Morikami Park. In which book does one of the characters state, quote, I'm nocturnal? The Great Pet Heist by Emily Ekron. That is incorrect. Citrus Cove. In which book does a character respond to a question they're rarely asked by, quote, opening their mouth to answer, then closing it again, like the koi in the pond outside the pediatrician's office? A Field Guide to Getting Lost by Joel McCullough. Good job. Citrus Cove. In which book did the main character and his grandparents bond over a card game called King's Corners? Charlie and Frog by Karen Kane. Correct. Morikami Park. In which book does the main character get an internship at a bakery? From the Desk of Zoe Washington by Janae Mark. That is correct. Citrus Cove. In which book did a character say, quote, Stragglers are my favorite kind of guests. Midnight at the Barclay Hotel by Flora Bradley. Citrus Cove, you are correct. Morikami Park. In which book are two characters compared to, quote, soldiers on a battlefield together? 
Black Brother, Black Brother by Jewel Parker Road. That is incorrect. Citrus Cove. In which book does a character say she gets the best material from listening to other people's conversations? What was it by Jamie Sumner? I'm sorry, that was incorrect. Morikami Park, next question. In which book does a character think, how can I possibly be so fragile that my lungs can't even handle feelings? The Disaster Days by Rebecca Burhan. That's correct. Citrus Cove. In which book does a character say, quote, every time I look at you, I only see the top of your head because your face is looking down. You're transfixed by that phone. The Amelia Six by Kristen L. Gray. Can you say that one more time? The Amelia Six by Kristen L. Gray. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Morikami Park. In which book does an ambitious character aim to be featured in an article like the one pinned above their bed. A Field Guide to Getting Lost by Joy McCullough. That is correct. Citrus Cove, in which book does the main character first hear from her birth father after 12 years of silence? From the Desk of Zoe Washington by Janae Marks. Correct, good job. More Kami Park. In which book does the main character consider farting a form of domestic terrorism? Wish Upon a Sleepover by Suzanne Selfers. That is correct. Citrus Cove. In which book is a character the youngest of 13 siblings? Time's up. More Kami Park. In which book does a character accuse a friend of having a secret life? Roll with it by Jamie Sumner. That is incorrect. Citrus Cove. In which book does one character note, quote, I feel like we're speaking in silence? Charlie and Frog by Karen King. That is incorrect. Morikami Park, in which book was one of the characters' favorite TV shows, Antiques Roadshow? Midnight at the Barclay Hotel by Flora Bradley. That is correct, Citrus Cove. In which book does one character tell another, quote, you have an explorer's spirit, let's explore. My Lips and Makers, How to Test a Friendship by Dini Griffith. That is incorrect. Morikami Park, in which book did one of the characters have a handlebar mustache? Midnight the Barclay Hotel by Fleur Bradley. That is correct. Citrus Cove, in which book does a character think you need a certain amount of security to fall asleep? Confidence that the world will be waiting for you when you wake up. The Disaster Days by Rebecca Bethan. That is correct. Morikami Park, in which book do two friends have a fight because of an Earth Day project? The Disaster Days by Rebecca Burhan. That is correct. You know what? On that positive, good answer, we're gonna take a quick little break. Morikami Park, Citrus Cove, you guys are like rock stars. You're just like doing so well. You're having a great time here at the Battle of the Books Championship, the elementary school division. We're coming right back. Think making a threat against a school is a joke? Think again. School police respond to and investigate every single threat, including those made on social media. Under state law, violators could face a second-degree felony punishable by up to 15 years in prison. 
If you know of someone making a threat, don't share it, report it. Download the Safer Watch or Fortify Florida app today. And welcome back to the Battle of the Books. My name is Rick Blackwell. We're inside the studios of the Education Network. And during that quick break, both teams from Morikami and Citrus Cove, they read a couple more books. I think they're going to be really ready for this next round. All right. We are going on to the next question. It's going to go to Citrus Cove. Are you guys ready? In which book does a character set the church on fire? That is correct. Morikami Park. In which book does a character say, I'll never understand the allure of sauce-drenched meat? Um, The Incredibly Dead Pets of Rex Dexter. Uh, no, Wish Upon a Sleepover by Suzanne Sophie. I'm just going to ask the judges if they say a second book. Do, were you able to take the second book? Okay, correct. Good job, Morikami Park. Next question to Citrus Cove. In which book is a character given the following advice? Quote, heads up, another strip, another field. See everything. Blackwater, Blackwater by Jewel Parker Rhodes. That is, that is correct. Morikami Park, in which book was the character cursed after losing an ar arcade game? The Incredibly Dead Pets of, of Rex Dexter by Aaron Rowan. Correct. Citrus Cove, in which book did the group The Innocence Project help overturn a wrongful con conviction? From the Desk of Zoe Washington by Janae Marks. That is correct, Citrus Cove. More Kami Park. In which book does a character ask for a hammer to nail their window shut? Eclipse. The Total Eclipse of Nestor Lopez by Adriana Cuevas. That is correct, Citrus Cove. In which book is a deceased character's artwork described as, quote, bold lines and shapes that looked abstract, but if you look more closely, figures started to emerge. Samantha Barkley Hotel by Fleur Bradley. That is incorrect. Morikami Park. In which book is a character found unconscious in the garage? Roll with it by Jamie Thunder. That is correct. Citrus Cove. In which book does a character have the following memory? Quote, I'd fall asleep right on the beach. The lullaby of the waves lapping the shore as mom would run her fingers through my hair. Roll With It by Jamie Sumner. That is incorrect. Morikami Park, in which book does a professor remark, quote, we, ca we can't draw any conclusions if every result is random. Following Baxter by Barbara Curley. That is correct. Citrus Cove, in which book does a character lose consciousness at school and wake up at the hospital? Roll with it by Jamie Sumner. That is correct. Morikami Park. In which book is a missing item found in a Christmas tree? Amelia Six by Kristen Elgar. That is correct. Citrus Cove. In which book does a character lose her, quote, sweet tooth? Charlie Frog by Fran Kane. That is incorrect. Morikami Park. In which book does the main character, quote, have a little help from the great beyond in order to win his dodgeball game in gym class? The, inc the Incredibly Dead Pets of Rex Dexter by Aaron Reynolds. Correct. Citrus Cove. In which book was a character described as one, quote, of those living statues? They're thinking, feeling, sensing, but nonetheless, seem like stone. The, 
the media. I'm sorry, time is up. Murakami Park. In which book does a character end up in the hospital with pneumonia? Rolled it by Jamie Sumner. That is correct. Citrus Cove. In which book is a character a Rubik's Cube champion? The Media Six by Kristen O'Gray. Correct. Murakami Park. In which book was there a dancing plant? The Magnificent Makers, How to Test a Friendship by Thean Griffith. That is correct. Citrus Cove. In which book is the following advice given? Quote, be you, stay confident, visible, even if others can't see you. Blackboard the Blackboard by Drew Parker Rhodes. That is correct. Morikami Park. In which book is the following quote found? Because murderers don't giggle, they laugh maniacally. Everybody knows this. The Incredibly Dead Pets by Rex Dexter. Er, the Incredibly Dead Pets of Rex Dexter by Aaron Reynolds. That is correct. Citrus Cove. In which book does a character say the following? Quote, I decided instead of focusing on speed, I'd focus on possibilities. A Field's Guide to Getting Lost by Drew McCullough. That is correct. Morikami Park. In which book does a character try to look casual while hanging out under a potted plant? The Great Pet Heist by Emily Ekton. That is correct. Citrus Cove. In which book did the character discover a book's call number engraved on a headstone? Charlie and Frog by Karen King. That is correct. More Kami Park. We have a winner. That's the magic bell. We are so excited to crown that winner on this elementary school division coming up right after this break. Safety doesn't happen on accident. Buckle up, pay attention. And never drive with an impaired driver. We're all counting on you. Welcome back inside the studio of the Education Network. Hi everyone, I'm Rick Blackwell. I'm joined by Lisa Seymour from Library Media Services. What an exciting competition. I know you worked so hard on this. Tell me what were some of your thoughts about the finals? They were amazing. I had no idea who was gonna win to the end. We had several lead changes and these kids really just blew me away today. They were unbelievably prepared. Morikami Park versus Citrus Cove. We're going to get to the winner in a second, but Lisa, just talk about some of that work. The media specialists at all the elementary schools, the, can we, can we talk about how many teams were involved this year? It really is quite an operation. So there were over 500 teams involved this year. These two teams were the top of that. It was unbelievable. This year, the competition was fiercer than ever. You guys heard it. More than 500 teams, and you guys are two, the top two of those 500 teams. What an accomplishment just to get this far. But we do have a first place, and we do have a second place. So let's start with that silver medal, the second place team. Lisa Seymour, tell us who's second place this year. This year, second place goes to Citrus Cove Elementary School. All right, Citrus Cove Elementary. Lisa, I'm going to allow you to pick up those silver medals, and we want to award each of the members of the Citrus Cove team their silver medals. Lisa's going to put it around their neck in just a little bit. Citrus Cove was here a couple of years ago. They're back. I have no doubt they're going to continue to come back year in and year out, the grand battle of the books. And it's so exciting to see how interested and excited they were about this competition and specifically how much work they put into it. And it really starts uh, with uh, their sponsor, Zach, and, and also Anam. Congratulations, the captain. Anam, why don't you come on over here real quick? I want to ask you a quick question while we're putting the rest of the medals on the students. Just how much fun was that to be with your friends day in and day out and to talk about reading? It was really fun. Um, I'm really glad that we practiced and um, we tried our best. So. 
So when you guys would get together as a group, did you guys talk about the books? Was it an opportunity to really kind of share what you love about reading? Was it fun being around other kids that love reading as much as you do? Yeah, it was really fun. All right. And Zach, come on over as well. And uh, just tell me, how proud are you of Books and Woofs? That was a fantastic showing today. I'm so proud of this group, the dedication, just the teamwork. Unbelievable. I want to thank the parents, too, and everyone who helped out. I'm so proud of them. They did an amazing job. We hope to be back here again next year, too. <laughs> All right. And you guys had wonderful T-shirts, too. That's fantastic. All right. So, Lisa, congratulations to Citrus Cove Elementary. That's very exciting. They had a, a wonderful performance here today. So we do have a champion to crown, so go ahead and tell us. So our champion this year for the second year in a row is Murakami Park Elementary School. All right, Murakami Park, two years in a row. Why don't you put some medals on these fine champions? Again, we started with 500 plus teams in the elementary school division. We ended up with Murakami Park Elementary. They've got quite the dynasty. You know, we got the uh, Super Bowl, and so it's exciting to reward excellence. And the Super Bowl champ of Grand Battle of the Books is the team from Morikami Park Elementary. We were talking to some of the students. They've read the books, many of them, 15, all 15 books. In some cases, they've read those 15 books more than once. And, and in fact, let's talk to Rishik. Just um, come on over here. You read the books, and as you look into that camera, Rishik, tell me how many books you read and how many times you read what, some of them more than once. Um, I think I read them all more than five times. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Lisa, this young man read 15 books more than five times. That, that's just so inspiring. That's amazing. My goodness. Did you have time to sleep? Yes, I did. <laughs> and he plays tennis too. So let me tell you, let me ask you, what is it about reading? What is it about just enjoying a good book? that you just love so much that you're willing to put that much time and attention into it? So when I pick up a good book, when I see what's happening every time my mom tells me to close the book, and I'm like, one more page, because I really like reading that book because it just teleports to a whole new world. That's fantastic. Rishik, we're so proud of you. We're so proud of your teammates. Just what was it like working with these like-minded students who also love reading just like you do? It was very fun to work with them. Um, so glad that they all so glad that we all work together to accomplish this. I'm so proud of you. That's incredible. Good job. And Becky, can you come over here real quick? Just brag about Rishik and just brag about these other team members. I brag about all of them because they are fabulous. They worked really hard. They read their books. Um and they worked together great as a team. We had like over 50 teams at our school and they took the lead. They came out every day after school this week to practice, to make sure they were ready and collaborate. So I'm very proud of them. Oh, that's so sweet. And Lisa, you got to brag about Becky and all these sponsors because they put in the, the work after school. They do. They put in so much work to have this happen for their students. And I'm inspired by them every single day. All right, two amazing teams. We started with 500 plus. We got down to two and our champions this year, the team from Morikami Park Elementary, and they're gonna have their name on the Kavanaugh Cup. That's so exciting. Tell us about the Kavanaugh Cup real quickly. The Kavanaugh Cup was named for Kim Kavanaugh. He was a huge supporter of the Battle of the Books and the cup was named in his honor. All right, and it, does it go to the specific school? It travels to each winning school every year. All right, so all the students, they're used to seeing that Kavanaugh Cup at school, and they're going to have it for another year. So congratulations to both teams. So exciting. What a fantastic way to start the competitions, the elementary school division. Once again, Morikami Park Elementary School, your champion in the grand battle of the books. Lisa, thanks for you and all your team and the judges. They did a great job. And thank you to our studio audience for being here as well. From inside the Education Network Studios, I'm Rick Blackwell.